Starliner has spent over 50 days in space, far exceeding the initial plan of just about eight days. That's more than six times the expected period, and this raises lots of questions about the future of this spacecraft. Boeing and NASA are likely facing significant challenges in maintaining the Starliner project. With increasing difficulties, is Boeing considering giving up on this project? And how has NASA reacted to the current situation? Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. After many weeks of troubleshooting and tests to simulate the issues occurring with Boeing Starliner spacecraft, the latest press conference on 25th revealed that the results from NASA and Boeing are unchanged. Starliner is still not ready to set a return date for the two astronauts on its first manned test flight. We don't have a major announcement today relative to, uh, to a return date, said NASA commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch. Starliner's return to Earth has been repeatedly delayed since its initial planned re-entry about a week after launch. It was then pushed to no earlier than June 18th, then June 22nd, then June 25th, now late July. Now Starliner and its crew aren't expected back until August at the earliest. This is an outcome that disappoints almost everyone, but it's clear we anticipated this. The issues with Starliner are not trivial. They have become, or perhaps were from the beginning, more serious than ever. Honestly, I don't want to think this way, but looking at the press conference about Boeing's first flight, it seems evident that NASA and Boeing never mentioned the main issues, kind of like they're trying to cover up deeper problems. Perhaps officials fear that openly admitting the current journey is too risky or would spur more sensationalist news. Or maybe NASA's leaders just want to protect Boeing. After all, they do plan to send up more crews on Starliner, and any sign of disappointment from the space agency could erode public confidence in their already troubled contractor. NASA would do better if they embrace the uncertainty instead of avoiding it. To borrow a mantra from the agency itself, the first manned flight of Starliner is a test mission. Unusual events, they're predictable, and NASA believes that they are well-equipped to handle them. But no matter what, only time's going to tell. If NASA and Boeing can't step it up, they're going to have to turn to alternative means to safely bring the astronauts back home. And no one can do this but SpaceX. If this happens, Starliner will officially face a disastrous failure in its entire development program, and its future will be... Mm, of course, there will be no future. Starliner is still too flawed to continue with manned missions to the ISS. However, even if Starliner succeeds in the return, its future development is fraught with difficulties, and it still has the potential to get canceled. Why is that? Well, we can see that there are not many Boeing officials speaking up to defend their ship. Space is just a part of Boeing's defense, space, and security business unit. And in Boeing's revenue by sector in 2023, BDS just generated 32% of the company's revenue at nearly $25 billion. It's worth noting that $25 billion are also made up of non-space activities like contracts for the military helicopters, fighter jets, and munitions. Meanwhile, the company's financial strength lies in its commercial aircraft business, which brought in nearly $33 billion, or 44% of 2023's revenue. When Boeing's commercial planes encountered a series of troubles, costing the company at least $32 billion since 2019 and no end in sight, it was a major blow to the over 100-year-old firm. Economically, Boeing's Starliner shows no profit, with prolonged heavy losses, and now the company has to bear the costs themselves as the government can no longer fund them. This is not to mention other issues like technical problems with the spacecraft, which are very difficult for Boeing to solve even down the road, and competition in the launch market with dominant rivals like SpaceX's Dragon. These points raise questions about the future of Boeing Starliner spacecraft manufacturing niche. Overall, I assess that Starliner's program does not have a long-term path. Even if Boeing has to abandon Starliner, it's not going to be significantly impacted financially. This is provided that the company fulfills the six missions assigned under the commercial crew contract that was awarded by NASA. On the other hand, NASA needs to recognize Boeing no longer wants Starliner to compete and should therefore focus on collabing with SpaceX to further develop the Dragon spacecraft. Boeing's also shown a lack of focus in their space sector, as evidenced by their agreement to sell ULA, a joint venture rocket manufacturing and launch company, as a first step. The Starliner program will be the next step. So, what do you think of this speculation? Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're at it, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. All right.
In addition to the announcement that there's no return date for the two astronauts, the press conference 25th from NASA and Boeing's leadership also gave us some possible answers about the causes of Starliner's problems in the first leg of this journey, including helium leaks and thrusters suddenly dropping on the way to the ISS. These revelations came after Boeing and NASA spent the last few weeks investigating the real issues and planning for additional tests, which will serve as a highlight to better understand the problems, said Mark Nappy, Boeing's commercial crew program director. At a site in New Mexico, engineers fired test engines more than a thousand times, replicating how the thrusters on the space-bound Starliner would have ignited. They then fired the thruster to try out several ways the engines might fire on the way home from space, according to Boeing. The goal of this testing was to gain a better understanding of why the spacecraft's thrusters unexpectedly shut down and what, if any, dangers are associated with turning those thrusters back on. Officials said that they were able to recreate how the thrusters in space deteriorated during flight with the ground tests. The testing may have helped give engineers a better understanding of the issue's root cause. Heat building up inside the thrusters may be causing Teflon seals to bulge, restricting the flow of propellant. The testing has given us additional confidence to undock and return, Nappy said. The findings also prompted Boeing and NASA to abandon plans to allow astronauts to manually fly the Starliner spacecraft on the way home, as they did briefly on the way up to the ISS. Some of the manual maneuvering put some extra stress on the thrusters, Stitch said. Still, officials did not definitively say Thursday that Starliner spacecraft is what carried veteran NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to the space station, and if it'd be the same vehicle that brought him back home. There's a lot of good reasons to complete this mission and bring Butch and Suni home on Starliner said after noting that NASA does have contingency options if Starliner does not get the approval to bring the astronauts back. We need to get through the process, he added. We have another critical Starliner mission management team to review all the thruster data we just talked about. Of course, I'm very confident we have a good vehicle to bring the crew back with, Nappy said. Williams and Will Moore arrived at the International Space Station June 6th for what was expected to be a roughly week-long mission. As of Thursday, the astronauts have been in space for about 50 days. NASA has indicated that Starliner can stay in space for a maximum of 90 days. Separately, engineers have made headway in understanding helium leaks that hampered the first leg of Starliner's journey. But Boeing and NASA will take a close look at the issue again during additional testing of the vehicle in space, though it will continue this weekend, Stitch said. The testing will include the firing of 27 Starliner thrusters while the vehicle remains docked at the ISS. Analysis of components on the ground, specifically a version of the Starliner service module that's been sitting in White Sands, New Mexico for three years, has showed that the helium leaks may be a result of seals that have gotten degraded because of exposure to propellant vapor, according to Nappy. The natural fix is to just change that seal out to a material that's not so susceptible to being worn down by exposure by the propellant, Nappy said referring to possible changes that Boeing can make for future Starliner missions. Still ahead, however, is work to determine whether the leaks on board the Starliner that's already in space have gotten worse as the vehicles remain docked at the ISS. Because the service module, and that's the portion of the spacecraft plagued by the helium leaks, on the ground was exposed to propellant for so long. And that be said, it could offer a worst-case understanding of how badly the seals can be degraded. The ongoing effort to understand the helium leak is among the chief reasons why NASA and Boeing still aren't able to give us a return date for Williams and Wilmore or a definitive answer on whether Starliner is ready to fly him back home. The key attributes of the flight rationale really are that we understand the helium leaks. We understand the stability of the leaks and how we can manage those should they get bigger, Stitch said, referring to the possibility that the leaks affecting the Starliner service module may worsen. NASA and Boeing plan to carry out a review to plan for Starliner's undocking, which could come as late next week, according to Stitch. We certainly hope that works out. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.